Hello and welcome to episode two of Rangers TV. Sorry about the time lag between this episode and the previous one. I really took some time out to reevaluate how we could make this particular series different to all the other series that are on bushcrafting, survival, prepping, off-grid, all that sort of thing. And one of the ways I want to do it is to include viewer input. So I want to include your comments. I'll read them out at the beginning of the show. I want to include your bits of video. If you If you've got some ideas and you just want to shoot it, you don't want to edit it into a whole YouTube video, put it on Dropbox, we'll grab it and we'll put it in the show. Of course we will. You know, the idea is that we represent the people that watch the show. So that said, we've got um, one of those videos for you this week. Kevin is a Geeks e Electronics EDC. It's a great video, worth watching. We've got a, a rundown on water storage and we've got a book review. So please like, please subscribe, that would be great. I really would like to get an idea of how many people are out there that actually watch these videos. And uh, yeah, let us know what you think. And on with the show, and thank you very much for watching. Take care. Each trooper will be charged with responsibility for preserving water. Our existence as an operating army depends on these following water saving procedures. Remember, water is life. Exactly that. Water is life. Without it, you're going to die. It's as simple as that. Um, the only thing I would criticise about that particular sequence is those water bottles look way too small. Those look like, you know, 750 mils. Not nearly enough to keep you alive on a desert planet. But that aside, it's a good sentiment. Now, I like to keep between 20 and 40 litres on hand at all times, just in case the water main where I live gets broken just in case um, there's a problem with the water supply, suddenly it's contaminated, which can happen. Um, you know, I'm looking at you, Flint, Michigan, where they still haven't got water, you know, after years of uh, telling people that the water is contaminated. So, so that you don't get ill, store some. I've got a 20 litre water container here, um, which I, well, scavenged is a good word, from um, a, a bin at work. They were going to throw it out. It originally contained um, distilled water for the air conditioning system, but they found they didn't need it. In addition to that, what you can do is get these two litre bottles that we've seen on the previous episode, a load of those. They're a bit flimsy, but if one of them gets punctured, you're only losing, you know, 10% of your water instead of all of it if, the, if a puncture happens to a larger container. Or even if you drink a lot of fruit juice like I do, you know, these one litre bottles are really sturdy because they're designed to be shipped. It's, you know, they're designed to be put in crates and banged around a bit. And they're easy to put in a go bag if you need to bug out and you can count off half a day's water with each bottle. Um, it's really important to have it. There are lots of natural disasters that can cause your normal water supply to be interrupted. You know, a water main bursting, a tsunami, an earthquake, anything. And those happen all over the world all the time. It could even be routine maintenance. Suddenly your building supervisor needs to turn off the water for an afternoon while the pipes are checked. Or if there's a burst pipe, they'll cut off the water supply to any apartment in that building or even any house within that street. So it behooves you to, you know, keep some on hand. And that's really all I've got to say about the matter. If you know in advance that water is going to be cut off for a while, fill your bathtub. Um, a domestic bathtub holds between 150 and 220 litres of water, which will keep you going for a very long time indeed. And, you know, even if you cook with water and you're about to throw it away, if your water supply has been cut off, your toilet's going to be, you know, cut off from water. Keep all that grey water because you can still flush a toilet because it works on a, an equalised pressure system. So you can literally pour water down it and it will flush your loo. And, you know, human waste is extremely toxic. You, you know, you've got to keep your hands clean if you're anywhere near it. You can't afford to get um, any kind of dysentery or diarrhea or anything like that. So you've really got to keep an eye on it. Also, if you're going somewhere where you're not used to the water, if you're going on a camping trip or anything like that, take drinking water with you if there's not readily available clean drinking water. I mean, dysentery is one of those things that's crippled armies for, throughout human history. 
and it's sometimes not even down to the water being particularly dirty. It's due to different microbes being in the water in different regions. So think about that. You know, if you drink water that's from somewhere else, you could get an upset stomach. That could put you out of action. It will slow you up. It will make you, it, it will compromise your decision making. Um, you know, you're all smart people. You all know this. I'm just making an extra point. Um, you know, if you know there's a problem coming, fill your bathtub. It's a good idea to have water on hand anyway. You know, have it. You know, you can't predict what's going to happen in the next 20 minutes. You know, you can't certainly can't predict what's going to happen in the next few months. Get some water containers. Have enough to keep you know to keep yourself going for at least a week before you have to start purifying water or boiling it, because purifying water takes an awful lot of fuel and you need a lot of it. Like a little camp stove will do maybe half a litre at a time. So that's four, you know, well, a little camp stove with a, a half litre pot. You know, that's four lots that you've got to do every day. So you've got to hunt or scavenge or use fuel that you already have. So it's best to have it just to hand. Um, and it's, it's one of my, you know, major pet things, you know, water, way before food, way before shelter. You need it, store it. In modern civilization, we're carrying around a lot more tech with us on a day-to-day -day basis from ebook reader, tablet, mobile phones, you know, rechargeable flashlights. The sky's the limit, really. Unfortunately, all of these devices are quite power-hungry, maybe with the exception of the ebook readers. But if you find yourself in a, uh, in a you know, you're outside of your own home, for longer than expected, your devices are starting to fail on you, you need a bit of a boost, what can you do? I keep all my electronics in this uh, Maxpedition micro pouch, I believe it is. It's just, you know, one of these pouches you can stick in your pocket or in a bag. Keeps everything nice and neatly organised. Soup in a bowl, not soup in a sandwich. Just on the front I've just got a wee reflective patch thing, just because I can. And all the bits I need to, for my electronics to survive on a daily basis are kept inside here. So you can see inside the case, everything is nicely and neatly organised. The main part of the, the main bulk of the case comes from this uh, USB power bank. It's a uh, TechNet with uh, 15 amp hour capacity, which will last a good long time. Two USB ports for charging and then one to get it powered up. Uh, got four lights on it, gives you an idea of how much power is in it. With this I can charge up my phone about four times, which is really handy. And, uh, I can say the two USB ports have saved my uh, bacon on a couple of occasions, especially when you need to run a couple of devices. Uh, over on the left hand side, you know, it's not really electronic support, but a lighter is useful. You know, sometimes you just gotta have fire. Next up, I've got a, a 32 gig USB pen drive. It's just a pen drive, honestly, nothing special. Kingston brand, nice hard shell, does the job. And I've got a uh, GPG smart card embedded in a it's a smart card reader, basically. It has my GPG keys on it so that if somebody tries to take my laptop, they can't. They still can't impersonate me. You need physically need this to send GPG encrypted emails, or from or to decrypt them. Next up, I have the uh, what's known as a USB fast charge adapter, or colloquially USB condom. Basically, you stick it on the end of your USB devices, and it's it basically it's supposed to, you know, as the name says suggests, charge your devices faster than a regular cable plugged into a computer. It basically does this by blocking the data lines, and uh, tricks the device into thinking it can pull more power, and it, you know, it does. It's really good for if you're you know you're at somebody's house, you don't trust their computer, or you've got one of those public uh, charging facilities. You have no idea what's on the other end of the USB port. Could be well, it could be anything really, and it could be doing whatever. You know, who knows to your phone or your other devices? Don't be a fool. Wrap your tool. 
Next up, just some basic headphones to do the job. Saves you being subjected to whatever passes for modern music these days. Uh, keep them handy. We can just listen to podcasts and all that sort of stuff. Next up, because I am a uh, an Apple user, lightning cable. You know, it's a cable. Charges my phone. Done. And then I've got a micro USB cable. Charges everything else. Nice and simple. Everything fits there. Job done. So anybody that knows me will know that I like cheap survival equipment and I really, really love cheap, good books covering all the information that I don't like have in my head. Um, so we're going to be doing uh, basically a cheap book review over the next few months and I want to include all the sort of super cheap books that really do give you a wealth of information. And in my opinion, the granddaddy of all long-term survival books is this. Now, this is the John Seymour's Complete Guide to Self-Sufficiency. And it literally does cover everything about starting a farm, which is the only long-term survival solution. You know, people have had to do agriculture and all that sort of thing since time immemorial. And this, this edition especially has tons of information in it you really can't go wrong just literally just buy it if you're ever thinking about going and being self-sufficient or going off grid this is the book you should have i got this one on amazon for three pound fifty which is around five dollars delivered and it's just the best you know get it it was first published in 1976 and it was the original book that features in a British sitcom called The Good Life, where a family in a, like a suburban area, Surbiton in London, decide to go self-sufficient. And it literally has every single thing in it, from how to grow crops, when to plant seeds, what to grow, how to best use your land, to spinning wool, making butter, just everything. So if you're only ever gonna buy one survival book, you know, in, in, in the expectation of an apocalypse or the expectation of going and living off grid. This will give you literally a start on any information you need to start growing and producing your own food, your own power, sorting out water, right, looking after livestock, what you can expect to get out of livestock, how to butcher meat, everything. And it seems like a really flimsy book and it really is, you know, it, it just covers everything. Not maybe in the best detail, but it will give you an idea of how to do pretty much anything on a farm. So that's my quick review. It's 10 out of 10. It's dirt cheap. Even now on Amazon, you can get it for less than $5. Order it. You won't be sorry. Even if you want something just to inspire you into going off grid, if you want something that will just, you can grab on the way out, if you've got a bug out and find yourself a piece of arable land in order to exist, there is no substitute. It's the only one. It is the equivalent of another book, which I'll review, the SAS Survival Guide. This is the Agricultural Survival Guide. You know, just... Just get it.